tangible is go here. I'd like to explain a little something about a phenomenon known as diode clipping or audio clipping with the use of semiconductor diodes. How you can use two diodes back to back. Ordinary rectifier diodes will work at audio frequencies to limit the amplitude of the audio output of a device such as a communications radio. If you have been around uh, radio for a long time, you may remember some of the older radio receivers which had no automatic level control or no automatic gain control. So that if, a, if you were listening to a very weak signal and you encountered a strong, strong signal, that signal would blast you. The loudness of the signal would be overwhelming. And, in fact, if you were wearing headphones, you might actually feel pain in your ears. Well, they used to devise a circuit in order to prevent this so-called blasting. And a very simple way to do that is to take two semiconductor diodes and connect them in reverse parallel, like this. Now, you may remember that a silicon semiconductor diode has a forward voltage drop of approximately five or six tenths of a volt. What that means is that a diode like this will not conduct until the voltage reaches that forward breakover voltage of about five or six tenths of a volt. And then after that, about at voltages, if you try to apply more than that voltage across it, it will act like a short circuit. So if you place two of these back to back, in parallel reverse directions you can clip the peaks of any audio signal that comes in here to the input at this circuit here you can clip that like this to about five or six tenths of a volt and depending upon your uh, the impedance of your headset or your audio output that may occur at a rather loud uh, level of volume, or it may occur at a very faint level of volume. The higher the impedance, the fainter the volume level at which this clipping will occur. But, in practice, it turned out to work pretty well with ordinary headphones. And so, uh, in the olden days, when you were listening to the Morse code, in particular, on a radio, and, and a strong signal would come in, you could prevent it from blasting you. Unfortunately, if a voice signal uh, is applied to this input and the voltage exceeds this forward breakover voltage here, clipping on a voice signal will produce distortion that can get so bad that you can scarcely even understand the voice. So this is like what you would use in an old-fashioned receiver without any automatic level control if you're listening to CW. They used to use it... Um, CW meaning continuous waves or Morse code signals. Now you can also apply this same principle, reverse parallel of semiconductor diodes, to get a completely different phenomenon. Now in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition, on page 349 and 350, I describe this amplitude limiting procedure and how you can connect two diodes together in reverse parallel like this to obtain that characteristic. However, you can also take that reverse parallel diode combination and connect it in series with the circuit. What you get in a case like this is something called a threshold detector. A threshold detector. Now what that will do is that if the signal voltage is less than about six tenths of a volt positive and negative peak or five or six tenths of a volt or one to 1.2 volts peak to peak, you won't get any output here at all. So uh, if you're listening to a relatively loud Morse code signal and there's faint signals and noise in the background, you can in effect squelch out those faint signals. Another uh, term for this is squelch. This is like an audio squelch. So it takes 
a fairly loud signal in order to get any output. And you can adjust the volume of your radio to uh, determine how strong the signal has to be before it will get through this gate or this barrier. Here's an example of what the input and output waveforms would look like in a case like this. Same input as we had before, but a, a considerably different waveform. Notice that it takes, there's no output whatsoever until the input voltage reaches five or six tenths of a volt positive or negative instantaneous voltage. Once it gets above that, then the difference between the forward breakover voltage and the input voltage is what you get at the output. So you get a, again, a distorted waveform, but if you're listening to Morse code signals, uh, that distortion is not a, a particular problem. In fact, it's oftentimes a desirable thing to have a little bit of a, of an uh, non-linearity in the audio circuitry of a Morse code receiver because if you listen to a pure sine wave signal for audio signal for a long period of time you can get considerable hearing fatigue so this is another technique that um, I'm not sure if I discussed that in the book or not I don't believe I do um, if I do I'm not sure where the circuit is you can look for it <laughs> I'll look for it after I'm done with this and um, and redo the video if I find it. Absent-minded professor at your service. Anyway, this is something that you can do if, if you have an antique radio and if you're into antique radios and Morse code and things like that. Now I'm into Morse code on the ham radio. I'm not into antique radios because to be perfectly honest, these modern day digital signal processing receivers do a vastly better job of anything the older receivers could ever do. They have features and they make it so much more enjoyable and easy to receive radio signals, especially ham radio signals these days. Anyway, that's a, a little experiment you can do. You can check these circuits out if you have an old radio and play around with them and just for fun, you know, you can learn a little bit about diodes, threshold detectors, audio clipping, and things like that. Stan Jibalisco, signing off.